So that thus it is, that natural men are held in the hand of God over the pit of hell, and they have deserved the fiery pit and are already sentenced to it. And God is dreadfully provoked. His anger is as great towards them as to those that are actually suffering the executions of the fierceness of His wrath in hell. And they've done nothing in the least to appease or to abate that anger. Neither is God in the least bound by any promise to hold them up for even one moment. No, the devil is waiting for them. Hell is gaping for them. The flames gather and flash all about them and would fain lay hold on them and swallow them up. The fire bent up in their own hearts is struggling to break out. And they have no interest in any mediator. There are no means within reach that can be any security to them. In short, they have no refuge, nothing to take hold of. All that preserves them every moment is the arbitrary will and uncovenanted, unobliged forbearance of an incensed God. Now you are probably not sensible of this. You find that you are kept out of hell, but do not see the hand of God in it. But look at other things, as uh, the good state of your bodily constitution, your care of your own life, and, and the means that you use for your own preservation. But indeed, these things are nothing. For if God should withdraw His hand, they would avail no more to keep you from falling than the thin air to hold up a person that is suspended in it. Your wickedness makes you as heavy as if you were led and tends downward with great weight and pressure towards hell. And if God should let you go, you would immediately sink swiftly and descend and plunge into the bottomless gulf and your healthy constitution and your own care and prudence and your best contrivance and all your righteousness would have no more influence to uphold you and to keep you out of hell than a spider's web would have to stop a fallen rock. There are black clouds of God's wrath now hanging directly over your head full of that dreadful storm and big with thunder and were it not for the restraining hand of God it would immediately burst forth upon you. The sovereign pleasure of God for the present stays this rough wind otherwise it would come and with fury and your destruction would come like a whirlwind and you would be like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. The wrath of God is like great waters that are damned for the present and they increase more and more and rise higher and higher until an outlet is given and the longer the stream is stopped, the more rapid and mighty its course when once it is loosed. It is true that judgment against your evil works has not been ex executed hitherto. The floods of God's vengeance have been withheld, but your guilt in the meantime is constantly increasing, and you every day are treasuring up more wrath. The waters are constantly rising and waxing more and more mighty, and there is nothing but the mere pleasure of God that holds those waters back that are unwilling to be stopped and pressed hard and onward. If God should only withdraw His hand from the floodgate, it would immediately fly open. And the fiery floods of the fierceness and wrath of God would rush forth with inconceivable fury and would come upon you with omnipotent Power, and if your strength were 10,000 times greater than it is, yea, 10,000 times greater than the strongest and the stoutest, 
the stoutest devil in the pit of hell, it would be nothing to withstand it or to endure it. The bow of God's wrath is bent. And the arrow made ready on the string. And justice bends the bow at your heart. And it is nothing but the mere pleasure of God and that of an angry God without any promise or obligation at all that keeps the arrow one moment from being drunk with your blood. Thus all you that never pass unto a great change of heart by the mighty power of the Spirit of God upon your souls, all you that were never born again and made new creatures and raised from being dead to sin into a state of new and before altogether unexperienced light and life are in the hands of an angry God. However, you may have reformed your life in many things and, and may have had religious affections and may keep up some form of religion in your families and in your closets and in the house of God. It is nothing but the mere pleasure, His mere pleasure, that keeps you from being this moment swallowed up into everlasting destruction. 